All right, so I've got a piece of, I think it's two by 12 here. Um, this is just a piece of scrap wood that I found at a construction site nearby uh, about three years ago. So I'm finally gonna use it for a steampunk rifle. Uh, you see it's broken here on the end, so this is gonna be where the uh, barrel comes out at here. And then it kind of goes back all the way over to here. All in all, it's maybe about four feet long or so. Not, not too big. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and just draw out pretty much what I want, starting with the stock and then running over into the barrel down that way. As with any older piece of wood, you probably wanna cut off the end here because there's some checks and cracks here. Um, stuff that I just don't want, so I'm gonna cut that off. And that's gonna give us a point of where we're gonna start laying things out from. So what I've been reading on the internet is that the pull length is about 14 inches. That's from the crook of the arm to the trigger. We'll lay out 14 inches, which is right here. So this is kind of what I'm going to be looking at here. Um, it's called a Schutzen or Schautzen rifle. I'm not exactly sure how it's pronounced. I'm not very good with my German. But that's kind of where I want to go. See, it's got the C over here, where it goes on the shoulder. Maybe not quite as angled like that. Maybe straighten it out and make it a little flatter. I think I'm gonna make it so you put your thumb through it. Those kind of those kind of guns look cool too. All right, to try and kind of get an idea of how this is gonna fit my shoulder for that rifle that has the C section over here, I gotta find something that's kind of similar in size to my shoulder. So I think this might work. Let's give this a shot here. Let's see. So that was a little tight. So I'm gonna try something else here. Maybe if I just give a little bit of relief here at the ends. So here's the line that I had originally wanted to start with. And this goes past it, so I'm going to have to move that line forward. First of all, let's figure out where we want this to sit. I don't need it to come straight down. I think if... Yeah, I'll give it a slight angle upwards like that. So I think this is looking a little too chunky. I want to kind of break it up. And since this is kind of steampunky, which is kind of art deco-y, I'm trying to think of some kind of art deco look to it. So I'm thinking like Empire State Building with like circles or half circles that kind of stack on top of one another here, getting smaller. So that's what I came up with. All these hash marks are gonna be gone from the stock, and that gives me some opportunities to do some other 
possibly cool stuff in there. We'll see what I can come up with and what time allows. Well, it's done. Uh, well, sanding at least. I uh, took it up to 220, uh, except on the insides here, I took those that only up to uh, 120. It's just construction grade pine, so I don't think I need to go all the way up to 320 or any higher than that, um, especially not before I get any finish on it. We'll see what I do after the finish. Uh, but it's really smooth, feels really good. Fits right here, my thumb goes right in there, it's nice and smooth, there's no jagged. So focusing now on getting the electronics installed on the rifle, I'm going to be using this USB backup charger for cell phones. And I want to put it into the handle, because it would be a good place to hide it, and I don't really have much room anywhere else. And hopefully that way I'll be able to switch it out with another one that I have like this as well. So if this one runs low, I can just throw the other one in. All right, so the idea here is use the chop of the vise and the bench as guides for the drill, much like a drill press here, and go into the handle this way. My main concerns about this is having the rifle twist on me or physically move forward on me. So I've got it in here pretty tight, and then I also have it clamped down here to prevent any rotation. It's one of the nice things about having a coplanar front is that you put things up against here and it touches everything else and you can just clamp it up nice and easy. Now I just gotta clean this up with some hand tools. So the hole in the handle is now finished. Uh, it goes all the way through so we can get the wire to go out the top. Uh, you can see that these sides are very very thin so fit in fact that I actually cracked it here but a little glue will fix that uh, but you can see this goes in it sticks out a little bit but I think that's kind of cool it looks like a bit of a magazine or something some kind of power cell sticking out so we'll just have to dress it up and make it look cool I need to start working on the barrel here I'm going to be using this half inch schedule 40 PVC pipe which is conduit for electrical and that pipe for water for plumbing um, I'm going to cut it to about 26 inches. I figure that's a good way amount of protruding at, at the end that looks good. So I think that looks pretty slick. I need to put a trench in the bottom here in order to get in there to put the LEDs in and everything else. So I'm going to use a Dremel with a cutoff tool to just cut it down here. Now the barrel's been put into the trench temporarily with just some masking tape. I'm trying to figure out where I want these uh, caps and the tubes. It's looking like about an inch and a half apart up here. And then I was thinking I'd put these kind of on an angle this way, like that. Somewhere back here. Yep. Alright, so we need to add some color to this. 
Um, I'm going to start with the red mahogany, but I'll probably add some darker stuff later as well. Kind of build up a nice dark finish on here. Dark walnut. So since the last time we saw this, I put a couple of coats of shellac on. I didn't film it because, you know, putting shellac on wood usually isn't riveting entertainment. But in this case, it really turned out nice. It made it darker and more richer. It really upped it, I think. Uh, but now I gotta finish it. I got a clapped out piece of 220 grit sandpaper here that I'm just gonna lightly sand over. It's pretty smooth. Maybe knock back some of that sheen a bit. Make it a little nicer to hold on to. There we go. Now it feels really good in the hand. Foil tape made by the duct tape people. Thank you. So you get kind of wrinkly in here because there's that's where the trench is at. All right, so now we're on to the electronics section of the rifle. Uh, this spins and lights up. It's hard to see here, but this lights up red. So that's pretty cool. Found this on clearance for like a couple bucks. Um, it doesn't quite work all the time. It tries to spin. It's supposed to spin. And then it don't turn off. Shut up. Stop. There. And then these are pretty cool too. Um, they're just LEDs strung up on a string here and you push the button you can kind of see them lighting up. They're kind of flashing. So I got these on clearance for about 50 cents after the 4th of July. And if you go take off each of these stars, you end up with something like this. Now there's no batteries in there. One of the neater things about this is that you can take this off here. And it's literally just a string. These do not need to connect at all, so they don't need to You've got this here, and they're all in parallel, so they all make their own circuits. So these require about three volts of power, and I want to supply it with a, a five volt phone charger, backup charger. In order to do that, you need to put a resistor in series with them so you don't blow the LEDs. And I found that it was about 100 ohms. So here are my 100 ohm resistors that I scavenged out of other electronic bits and pieces. So just putting this in series with one of these leads will make these light up. Let's open this thing. You can't really see it, but there's lights in the center here. These light up here, and it's just supposed to spin. And it makes a very annoying noise. We're going to get rid of that. There we go. When I got this, the batteries were bad, so I put new ones in just to see what everything did. And I already know I don't want this in here. <clears throat> this is where the uh, LEDs go on. You can see it. A little capacitor here. And here's our switch. This is really quite simple. That's all it is. So the LEDs come in here and they just shine all the way down here and they light everything up. One of the things I'm most interested in is this. So yeah, it spins. It's not lighting up. I think this has something to do with it here. There we go. 
All right, so here are the guts of that ray gun. It ran off four AA batteries, which are 1.5 volts each. So that comes out to a total of six volts going into these two leads here. I'm only gonna be able to supply five volts with the cell phone charger. So we'll see if we can get it to run off five volts. This is a fun little toy. I'm almost loath to take it apart because it's just fun to sit there and watch. It doesn't really show up so well on the camera, but it makes little interesting patterns and such with the LEDs. It's, it's fun. This here is uh, it's soft and squishy, so if you bap your sister over the head with it, it doesn't hurt so much. Let's take it apart. All right, so here is the inside of this toy, the spinny toy. <clears throat> you can see much like the ray gun, there's a little piece of copper right there that touches on the shaft here that um, lights up the LEDs. And then this has got to go up here and touch the metal part up here in order to get the LEDs to light up. Now I see two screws in the bottom here, so let's see what's in there. Ooh. It's biffy. Look at that. You tie little knots in the wires around these little studs so they don't fly out or put too much strain on the PCB board behind there. Well, that's pretty cool. And this one just stuck up in the middle through the hole in here. So to do some of our testing, I've taken a USB cable and I've cut off the ends. You'll notice there's this bare wire here, which you don't need to worry about. You got the green and white wires, which you don't need to worry about. It's just the black and red. That's the power. 5 volts between those two. And then I'll go plug this into the wall wart. All right, here we can turn this on. And touch right here and here. So we got just about 5 volts there. So we now we can tie onto there. Continuing with the red to red and black to black. So this is where the flat end of the battery would normally go. This is where the other part would go. So this is positive and that's negative. So we'll attach the negative to here and we'll attach the positive to here. There we go. So now here we have the guts of the gray gun. And you can see here the blue was attached to the spring. So now that, that was the negative end and the red is the positive. Um, we've got the negative connected to the blue wire, the red connected to the red wire. I got this uh, resistor soldered back on here. We need to press the button. You can see it spins, but I can't test this to make sure it works because I can't do that both. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little clamp here, clamp on the button, and take this little this little piece here, and touch it to the edge, and there we go. The resistor got hot. So here we have the 4th of July special. Um, I've got the 100 ohm resistor in series here. That way we don't blow out our LEDs. And those work. I found that when doing this kind of wiring, you gotta kinda get some very thin stranded wire. The telephone cord has four wires right inside there. And they're all stranded and they're easy to solder. Just works very well. 
Yeah, it's not a NASA approved solder joint, but big fingers, small wires. You get what you get. So I need to rub and buff the bottoms to make them look like they're metal. I'm just trying to figure out what color on my sheet here I want to make them. I'm going to use a brushed gold on these. I've already put one coat on. I'll put another coat on. I'm leaving an unpainted blue ring around this piece of plastic because when the other part of the plastic goes over and glues over I don't want to try to glue to the paint it won't stick In order to activate the lights, I needed a switch. There was a bunch of switches that I got from harvesting off of the toys and stuff, but none of them really quite fit in here. So I went and got a doorbell. All it is is just a single doorbell. So when I press it, it should turn it on, and when I let go, it'll turn it off. I just need to put it in here. That, according to the instructions, requires a 5 8 inch hole, which I have a 5 8 inch Forstner bit here. I'm going to drill straight through to where it meets the hole down here for the battery pack. All right, so let's review what we've got so far. We took the motor from the spinny toy, uh, took the plastic white ball off the top and replaced it with a red Christmas tree light from the Christmas tree necklace. And uh, we left these little balls on here, the end of the wires that also light up. Uh, we still have to figure out a way to mount this to touch the silver collar here to light the lights up. The motor is also from the spinny toy. But here we've got the circuit board from the ray gun and the three LEDs that were lighting up inside the ray gun in that white part of the ray gun. So in order to get power to it all, I've got these red and black leads here. And they are going to go back to here, which is two LEDs from the 4th of July necklace. I've marked this one with black marker. And this one means that one, this one's red. And this is where we got the 100 ohm resistor here. So now to bring power in, we've got the USB connector here with the red and the black up here. And it's going to come in here like so. We also need to get a power and a button in there to turn it on and off. And that's going to be this doorbell here. And it's going to sit kind of over here somewhere. Now I can't wire this directly to here from here because this needs to be able to move as I'm taking the power pack, the battery pack in and out of the handle. So I've got these green and yellow wires here that are going to feed from this red wire of the USB down to here and then come back up and power this and this lead. So I'm sure that's clear as mud, but I'm going to wire it all up and I'll show you how it all works. All right, so here we go. We've got all of our, everything soldered together with shrink wrap on there. We've got the power supply coming in here. All we have left to do is plug in the battery pack. Stupid USB. There we go. Sweet. And you can't see the LEDs. They fell out of the hole. Yeah, I gotta work on that. All right, so I mounted the little wiper with um, a twist tie here and some orange tape. Uh, it's just some orange masking tape. 
We're going to cover that up with some more craft foam to kind of cover up the shaft there of the motor as well. And then we'll cover that with more of this foil tape. All right, now comes the moment of truth where we start hot gluing things together. First, I got to start putting these LEDs into the caps that we made. All right, now we're going to hot glue the caps to the top of the barrel. Okay. Now that we've got everything hot glued in place here, uh, you can see that the hot glue doesn't stick very well to this foil, which is why it's very important that you put the hot glue on the inside as well. So that way you get a kind of a hot glue sandwich with the hot glue as the bread and the foil tape as the meat or whatever you put inside your sandwich. So now I just need to tuck these wires in so they're out of the way. We can put it into the uh, stock that I've made. Um, I got the vacuum tubes on eBay. Uh, someone was just selling a lot of them, uh, like a box of them. And I just bought a whole box and I sorted through what I got and came up with these three. These are Tungsol. Shakes a little bit. You can see that looks cool. I like that. And these kind of just glow steady. All right, confession time. Uh, there was a lot of work to do and very little time to do it in order to get this gun done on time for the TeslaCon in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, I did a lot of stuff off camera because recording it triples how long it takes to do this stuff. So uh, let me bring you up to speed with what I did. And we're back from the convention, by the way. Um, I attached the barrel to the stock. I used some copper clamps here with some brass screws to hold it on. I used some picture hangers and I replaced the metal D-rings with the brass ones here. I used a braided belt. I took it apart and used some leather lacing as a whipping for there and there, plus a little buckle, and then back here as well. Also, I put in the doorbell here to turn everything on, and I added in the wiring. We got two wires going up into here from the doorbell, and the power from the battery pack down here goes up through this one into the first one as well. So it kind of goes back there and then back up. And I did some rub and buffing on these wire protectors here as they come out. So that way they look kind of like hoses. And then I used some craft foam around here, just some black craft foam to make it look kind of like a old timey plug that's just kind of plugged in the back there. Now, as you can see, some things didn't quite survive at the convention. The first and foremost is that the cup that was up here would not stay on. It was just super glued to this base of the red thing here and just tapping it slightly knocked it off. So I just ended up cutting it off so that way it would work because otherwise it would just get jammed in there and it wouldn't turn at all. And you can see my vacuum tubes up here didn't quite survive. They survived through most of the con. It wasn't until I got on the way home in the car that they broke off. I was hoping the uh, hot glue on both sides of the barrel would squeeze it together and hold it on there, but that didn't work and it doesn't stick to the tape at all. And I'm going to do everything I can to repair it in time for next one. I got some ideas of what to do up here that involves some brass wire work and stuff like that. It should be fun to do. So if you like this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up down below. And if you like this kind of content, and we've got a lot more coming, uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon next to it. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.